making a fire closer with a short flat sword. <laughs> You know, uh, Ed, Ed hates those, uh, remember, the, remember the markers used to push the buttons and they talk yeah. to you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, you know, and of course he, don't anybody touch that button! <laughs> you do, I'll kill you! <laughs> so we're at, uh, we're at, we're at, uh, P. Ridge, and the tour director, and Ed's already warned everybody, don't touch the button, and when we get up there, the tour director, who's, Plops down and sits on the button, <laughs> and Ed's go and the button thing starts talking. He's just, I can't tell you exactly what he said, but <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> he turned to me and says, General, if that S.O.B. had been your chief of staff, you'd have canned his ass. <laughs> Boy, he was bad. He was bad. <laughs> But you know, I can understand. You know, now that you now you you you're, you got things to do, you got a limited schedule. Now you got to wait a minute to that thing stop talking. Okay, we are. I, I would you say I was tap dancing until these guys could catch up. Uh, talking about Corinth briefly. What you'll always hear about Corinth are the railroads. But fortunately, this old film mentioned the rivers and the railroads. Grant is very subtle in his writings, and I gave you an beginning of the readings, he talks about the strategic importance of Corinth, he talks about the railroads, but then he says, Corinth was the great strategic center between Nashville and Vicksburg. Okay? Now there's your clue of what he's thinking. Remember, the mission is to open the Mississippi River. Always follow the money. About uh, three or four years ago, a friend of mine was at a conference at Gettysburg. And one of the instructors was asked the question, you haven't mentioned Vicksburg, and the instructor, who was a friend of mine, said, I'll give Vicksburg the 15 seconds it's due. He said, as soon as Porter captured New Orleans in April of 1862, the Mississippi River was in Rome. And he misunderstood everything. The commerce of the Mississippi River, not the military aspects. Lincoln had to get the support of the old North Northwest Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, these states, to open that river for commerce. And as long as that river was closed, regardless of why, they were hurting. And the state of Indiana is actually talking about as early as, as late as January of 63 of recognizing the Confederacy. So the river's got to be open. And Grant is one of the few generals, if not the only one, who truly understood what the president had in mind. And Grant knew that Lincoln was the key to saving the Union. And if Lincoln can't open that river, he's not going to be reelected. So, what does Grant do? He captures Fort Henry, and it forces the evacuation of Columbus, Kentucky. That opens up a stretch of river like so. Uh, now, if they move down, if they capture Corinth, that's going to force the evacuation of Memphis and open up that stretch. And then if he moves south to Jackson, what he tried to do in December of 62, that's going to flank Vicksburg and open the river up to there. He's thinking river, folks, and he's the only general who's really thinking strategically for the river. That's why Lincoln sticks behind him. Remember, it's after Shallow that everybody wants Grant's hide, and what does Lincoln say? I can't spare this man, he fights. He turns to one of his advisors, McClure, and he says, McClure says, you're going to have to get rid of him. The public wants his hide. The press is demanding it. He said, Lincoln made that statement, and then he says, what we'll do is, we'll put General Halleck in charge, we'll put Grant on the shelf for a month or two until everybody forgets about this. And that's exactly what happened. There's a politician for you who understands the nature of the fleeting memory of the American public. <laughs> so, uh, this is his plan here. Now, uh, uh, we'll flip around to shallow, there we go. Now we are, uh, we're going to be right here, We, right here. The bus is parked back here at two cabins, and if I orient the map, we can turn it this way. And orient so you can see, see exactly where we are, okay? Now what we've done is we've come past Shallow Church, down the main Corinth Road, and we are right here, standing right here at Fraley Field. The Confederates have set up three battle lines. And the, heart, the battle line is this, Hardee's Corps, 
is like so. With Pat Claiborne's brigade over here, the Woods' brigade in the center, Shaver's brigade over here. The idea is that the second line is Braxton Bragg's corps, the third line is Leonidas Polk's corps, and the fourth line is the reserve line of John Campbell Breckinridge. And what they're hoping to do is to sweep around and drive Grant's troops away from Pittsburgh Landing into Snake and Owl Creek, the swamps there. And of course, as I've mentioned to you, the Federals are camped out like Boy Scouts. Uh, they've got over here at Pittsburgh Landing, WHL Wallace's division is here. Uh, McClernand's division is down here, oh, let's say right about in just north of Wolf Field, okay, we're right here. McClernand's division is here. Sherman's division is right here at Shallow Church. Uh, Prentice's division is right over here on the Hamburg Purdy Road. And right over here at Cloudfield is Hurlbut's division. Uh, no logic whatsoever. Instead of having these divisions in a line between these two creeks as an offensive line, they're scattered around. So these, these regiments are completely disorganized. Now, on the morning of the Sunday morning, the 6th of April, 1862. We'll talk about this gentleman later, Everett Peabody, or Peabody as they pronounce it in Massachusetts. Peabody is going to send a patrol out against orders. Orders are don't bring or don't do anything to bring on a fight. But Peabody knows something's up. So he finds a regular army major named Powell who will not survive the day. So he doesn't get to vouch for Peabody. Powell will march a small patrol down this trail we just came. And coming across the field where the marker is in the distance, are A.B. Hardcastle's <coughs> battalion leading the way. The Hardcastle's men are just skirmish lines. They're from the uh, area of uh, Grenada, Mississippi. Uh, they're out in the middle of the field. It's so dark, nobody can see one another. <clears throat> in April, I will do a four-day tour of Shiloh. And what we'll do is we will get up one morning and we'll be out. We'll walk across that field at 5 in the morning. And as the sun comes up, we will start seeing. Because the soldiers here are looking at one another, and they think they're seeing deer. You know, they don't know. As they see these dark things moving around, well, you know, we, we just saw deer. And they're out, that's the time of the morning they're really out. And so all of a sudden, the sun starts coming up, and it silhouettes these men here. And the Confederates open fire. These men will return fire. The Confederates are, are southern boys. There are a lot of hunting. Their fire is more accurate, and the Federals start taking casualties here. And the Battle of Shiloh will begin right here at Fraley Field uh, with uh, Major, Major R.E.B. Hardcastle, that far marker right there. It's pretty long-range shooting. Pat Claiborne's men are out there. As the sun comes up, Powell is here banging away, and suddenly he looks. A little a lieutenant named Klinger goes down. He'll look off to his right, and he'll start seeing brigade, a whole brigade of men coming out through the trees. Uh, and he says, this is no place for us. And he'll head back up the road, okay? He's going to run into his colonel, who is going to uh, get a call to have a coward. Uh, and colonel should say, let's just get back in the fight. He says, you don't understand, colonel. They're, flick they're thicker than fleas on a dog's back out there. He says, I don't believe it. Uh, and and we'll, we'll see that in just a moment, what's going to happen out here. Okay, this is where the battle begins, of shallow, right here at Fraley Field. Questions here before we walk to our next stop and get in, I'll try to get you out of the cold. The bus, I see, has made the turn around despite all those vehicles. Good man. So we're now faced back out where we go to lunch, but we're going to make one more stop, so don't go get in the bus right now. We're going to go right past the back of the bus and let you see the rest of the act.